Okay, in this video we're going to solve by substitution, that is solving two equations with a technique called substitution. We'll do these examples, example 1, 2, uh, 3, 4, and as you can see, example 5 and 6, okay? Now, example 1, a plus 2b equals 100, b equals 30. So we can imagine these equations to be saying simply that an apple plus two bananas costs 100 cent or $1 and a banana costs 30 cent. So the only new skill we really need is substitution and you may well be aware of it already. It's where you take a, a value um, and plug it in for a variable. That's substitution. Okay. So we have b is equal to 30 means b is the same as 30 so in place of b in this equation I can put the number 30. And so I'll have a plus 2 times 30 equals 100 and now I have an equation, an equation has an equal sign with one variable, a, one unknown, and I can solve to find a. So we have a plus 60 equals 100, and subtract 60 from both sides, and we have a equals 40, and apple is 40 cent. And so we're done, because we have an apple is 40 cent, and a banana is 30 cent, and so we're done, because we have found all numerical values for the variables in each equation, okay? So an apple costs 40 cent, a banana costs 30 cent, what more do we need to know? Nothing. So we could check this equation by plugging in the value for a and b. So we could plug in 40, okay, um, plus 2 times 30. That's 40 plus 60, and that is indeed 100. And so this equation worked out. Okay, so we're all aware of that. Now substitution, as we see it, will usually be put plugging in an expression for a variable. Okay, so in this case, we have three apples. Take away a banana, you're left with 20 cent. That's the value of three apples minus a banana. And it says a banana equals two times an apple. A banana costs twice an apple. Okay, so we could take this expression for B, which is 2A, substitute that in here. And please, be, definitely do this. Definitely circle this and definitely move this along here. Okay. And the key concept is, do I plug the 2A into B, or do I plug the 2A into A? That's the trick. Do I plug it in here or here? Which one is it? And why? Well, we definitely plug it in for B. This is not correct. Do we understand why? Well, because it says B equals 2 apples, not A. So B is the same as 2 apples. So in place of B, I can put 2A, right? So now my equation should read 3a minus 2a equals 20. And if I solve that, I have 1a, 1 apple, equals 20. Okay? So we have a is 20. An apple costs 20 cent. And are we done? Is that the end? Well, the answer is no, we're not done. Because we have two equations and we have two unknown numbers, a and b. We need to find both of them. So we found a, now we need to find b. And the simplest thing to do in this case is to plug this 20 in to here. So I can write b equals 2 times 20. And we'll calculate b pretty quickly because now b equals 40, right? So we have apple is 20 cent, banana is 40 cent. And we can even plug these values into the original equation and see if, see if it all works out. So for example, 3 times 20 minus 40 should equal 20, right? 3 times a. 20, that's 60 cent, minus B, minus 40, okay, and that leaves us with 20, so it all worked out in the end, and of course it works here, because 40 is equal to 2 times 20, B equals 2A, okay, so both equations are true. Now, let's have a look at example 3. In this case, 2 apples plus 3 bananas cost 205 cent, but 3 apples minus 6 bananas costs negative 60 cent. What does that mean? Well, it means three apples, subtract six bananas, the value of that transaction is you're in debt by 60 cents, okay? So, wh how do we substitute now? Kind of lost, aren't we? What we've got to do is get one of the variables alone. So, what we might like to do is to take this equation here and solve for A. That would be a good idea. 
Why? Because I know from experience that that would be the easiest thing to do. I could solve this one for A, I could solve this one for B, I could solve this one for A, or solve this one for B. But just for the practice of it, if we solve this for A, then everything will work out. And we'll show you how. So we, we, we're used to solving for Y and solving for X. We've done that a lot. So now solve for A. A has been multiplied by 3, then 6B is being subtracted. So the last thing done to A is 6B subtracted, so to undo that, we add 6B to both sides. Okay, so negative 6B plus 6B makes 0, and we're left with 3A is equal to negative 60 plus 6B. Or you could write 6B minus 60, same thing, isn't it? Now, A has been multiplied by 3. And we have to undo that, so divide by 3. And as we've seen before, if I divide this by 3, I need to divide all of this by 3. So I need to divide each individual one by 3. So I get one apple equals two bananas minus 20 cent. And that should make sense in your brain. Because if three apples is the same as six bananas minus 60 cent, surely one apple is the same as two bananas minus 20 cent. Makes sense, doesn't it? It's kind of like, so in other words, when we divide, we can divide an equation, every term in an equation, by the same number. So, for example, if I had 10 apples plus 20 bananas costs um, 500 cent, and I divide everything by 10, it should read 1 apple plus 2 bananas costs 50 cent. Would that make sense to you? If 10 apples and 20 bananas cost 500 cents, surely 1 apple plus 2 bananas would cost 50, right? So we can divide every term in an equation by the same number if we like. So we're left with this. Now, A equals 2B minus 20. And we need to solve by substitution. Now, A is the variable by itself. So we're going to substitute for A. What you need to do is put parentheses around this expression. And realize that what this is saying is that A is the same as this. So all of this can be plugged in for A or for B. Which one? Do I plug it in for A or do I plug it in for B? Well, it says A is that. So plug it in for A, right? So we should have 2 and in parentheses, we'll put our 2B minus 20. So instead of A now, have 2B minus 20 plus 3B equals 205. And I have an equation with one variable, b. I just have to find b. So I'll go ahead and solve that. Multiply 2 in, and we get 4b minus 40. Then plus 3b equals 205. And then add like terms, 7b minus 40 equals 205. Um, add 40 to both sides. And we get 7b equals, this makes zero, 7b equals 245, and divide both sides by 7, and we should have b equals um, 35 cent, okay? So we end up finding the actual value for b. b is 35 cent, but we don't have the value of a. So how would you find a? Go ahead and see if you can find the value of a. What equation will you use? Because there's lots of equations to pick from, and one of them is better than all the rest. Because it's easier, it takes less work. If I want to find the value for A, now, I could do this. And I'll show you all the options, why not? I could plug 35 cent in here, so I could get 2A plus 3 times 35 equals 205. And sure enough, I would find the, the value of A. That's so we would have 2a plus 3 times 35 is 105 is equal to 205. And subtract 105 from both sides, you'd have 2a equals 100. Divide by 2 and you'd have a is 50 cent. Okay, so we can find b and find a. Easy enough. But you might want to simply use this equation because this requires less work. If I plug 35 in for b here, I'll have a equals 2 times 35 minus 20. Plug 35 in for B, see? So A equals 70 minus 20. A equals 50. Apple is 50 cent, okay? Then how do you check your answer? Well, simply plug 35 in here, 
into the first equation, 2 times 35 plus 3 times 50 should be 205 cents. And plug the num the values of A and B into the original this other equation. So you plug the original values, or you plug the values into both original equations. And then you check them, okay? So 2 times 50 plus 3 times 35 should give this. 3 times 50 minus 6 times 35 should give this. Okay? Simple as that. Now, example 4. 4y equals 6x minus 20 and 2.5x plus y equals 3. This time we don't have apples and bananas, so we don't know what we're talking about. But in any case, it's the same procedure. We need to find the values of x and y. We need to find two missing numbers. Now, the, we're solving by substitution, which means we have to have this. Either y equals something, or x equals something, and then we can substitute that, that um, expression in for x or y. So we have to either get y by itself, or get x by itself. And there's easier and more difficult things to choose. For example, I could choose to get this y here by itself. And I would divide everything by 4. And I would get y equals 1.5x minus 5. And that's okay. And then I could substitute this in for y into the other equation. And everything would work out. So we could do it that way. And I'll, So that's one way of doing it. There's another way of doing it. I'll show you another way. You could get this x by itself. Okay. If you wanted to. You could get this x by itself. So you have 4y equals 6x minus 20. You could add 20 to both sides and have 4y plus 20 equals 6x and divide everything by 6 then. So you would have 4 over 6, that's 0 0.667x plus 20 over 6, whatever that is, is equal to x. Okay? And 20 over 6, that is 3 and a third, so 3.333 Okay, that's another way. Might be a little bit more complicated because you've got long decimals. But I'll show you the easiest way of all is to find see if you've got a variable on its own already. See that? Y. So the easiest thing to do is solve for that Y there. Just subtract 2.5x from both sides. And just now you have Y equals 3 minus 2.5x. And you're done. Okay, so that's the, the quickest way of doing it. Of course, you could also write that y equals negative 2.5x plus 3. In this case, that you have, neg you have negative 2.5x here and here, and positive 3 here and here. So this is, these are the same thing, right? And you can plug that in for y. So we could take this expression here and substitute that in for y. So we should have 4 times 3 minus 2.5x is equal to 6x minus 20 and then solve for x. Okay, so you have an equation with one variable and just solve for that. And I mean, you should be used to solving equations by now. 12 minus um, 10x equals 6x minus 20. And then we can, at this point, I kind of like to add 10x to both sides to end up with a positive x value. It doesn't matter. You can do whichever you like. And then, oh, my mistake. That doesn't make 12x. That makes 12, doesn't it? 12. Ten, negative 10x plus 10x is 0. And we have 12 here. Then um, add 20 to both sides. And we'll have 32 equals 16x. And divide both sides by 16. And we have 2 equals x. So x is 2. And are we done? Is that the end? No, because we started with two equations. And they each had a missing x and a missing y in them. So we need to find the, also the value of y. Okay? And again, like we were saying, the easiest equation, you can either plug a 2 in here for x. You can plug 2 into x here if you like. But the easiest thing of all is to plug 2 in here. Because this equation is the best one to use to get x. It's just quicker. So y equals negative 2.5 times 2 is negative 5 plus 3. We have y is negative 2. Okay. So x is 2, y is negative 2. And you know, you can plug these values in and check them. So 4 times 
negative 2 makes negative 8. That should be equal to 6 times 2, 12 minus 20, and it is. So this one works out. And also plug the values into here. 2.5 times 2 plus um, negative 2 for y should be equal to 3. So 5 and negative 2 is 3, and this is also correct. Okay. So we've got number 6. Again, um, what a variable is easiest to solve for first? This x value, this y value, this x value, or this y value? Well, it's easiest to solve for this one, isn't it? All you have to do is add 3y to both sides, right? Negative 3y plus 3y is 0, and we have x equals negative 1.4 plus 3y, or 3y minus 1.4. And now we can put parentheses around that and put that in place of x. Okay, so the next line would be 4 times 3y minus 1.4 minus 14y plus 3.2 is equal to 0. And then we just solve that. And we get 12y minus uh, 5.6 minus 14y plus 3.2 is equal to 0. Add like terms, 12y minus 14y. 12 positives and 14 negatives makes 2 negatives, negative 2y. Negative 5.6 plus 3.2 makes negative 2.4, doesn't it? And on the right-hand side, we still have 0. So we need to add 2.4 to both sides. And we get negative 2y equals 2.4. Divide both sides by negative 2. And we should be able to find the value of y. And indeed, y is equal to negative 1.2. Okay? So we have y. Now find x. And the simplest thing of all is to do this. x equals 3. Plug negative 1.2 into this equation. 3 times negative 1.2 minus 1.4. And if you put that in your calculator, you should get the answer. In any case, it's negative 3.6 minus 1.4. So x should be negative 5. Okay, so we have the value of x and y. And we should always check our answers. Plug negative 5 in here. Okay, so in this equation, we should put negative 5 in for x. Then minus 3 times what was what? Negative 1.2. And that should be equal to negative 1.4. So that will be negative 5 uh, plus 3.6, which is indeed negative 1.4. So that works out. And plug the values into this equation. 4 times negative 5 minus 14 times... Uh, negative 1.2 plus 3.2 equals 0. If you calculate that, that's negative 20 plus um, plus, uh, what is that? 14 and 16.8, right? Yeah, plus 3.2 and that is indeed equal to 0 when you add that up, okay? And again, if we want to write the equation in order to pair form, that's x comma y, negative 5 comma negative 1.2. For example 5 here, what uh, variable do you solve for first? Take a guess. Well, in this case, he can either solve for this x, this y, this y, or this x value, okay? Now, the easiest thing of all, of course, is to solve for this y value because it's already, I mean, there's no, it's not been multiplied by anything. All we have to do is subtract 1.2 x from both sides, and you'll get y equals 3 minus 1.2 x, and then you can just solve for y, okay? So I'm sure you're able to do that, and you can go ahead and try that one. Um, and your answer in the end should be, by the way, x is 
5y is 1.2. So see if you can get that. And by the way, we usually like to write the answer in ordered pair form, x comma y. So like 1.5 comma 1.2, okay? Hi all, so I hope you figured that, managed to figure that out. Here is the problem worked out. So um, first off, start by solving for y. It's 3 minus 1.2x. The trick is to make sure to plug that in for y in the other equation. Now once we get to this equation here, we have one equation with just x in it. All right, That's the whole key, an equation with just x in it. And remember, this is a scales balance. You have zero on the right hand side, so don't let that zero go away. It does not go away. It stays there, okay? Um, and so we just solve that for x. We eventually get 12 minus 8x equals zero. The zero does not disappear. It's got to be, you know, you can't just, um, you know, some students like to pick up that zero and just like kind of throw it away and just say, you know, 12 minus 8x something or I don't know. I don't know what they do. But anyway, how that zero can't go anywhere. It's the right hand side of the equation. It has to stay there. So anyway, subtract 12, neg negative 8x equals negative 12, divide by negative 8, x becomes 1.5 eventually. And you plug that then in here and work it out and y should be 1.2, right?